Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Cool Dude Clem here once again, back with more high voltage stuff. And today, thought I'd show you my Tesla coil that I made. So before I power it up, I'll just talk about it for a little bit. So if you want to see it running, then just click the link right there and you can skip to it running anyway this is the primary which is just 10 turns of it's actually just multi-core cable which I've just all twisted together but you know, I've got 10 turns of that and the secondary I'm not sure what the uh, how many turns there are the, um, the wire came out of a 12 volt inductor no sorry 12 volt solenoid although definitely get more than 12 volts coming out of that yeah, someone might be able to calculate the number of turns by how much the uh, how many ohms it is. This is about 250 ohms. This secondary and the windings start about there and uh, stop about there. I lost count when I was winding that. It's the MOSFET that powers it. It's an RFP 260. I've added a couple of capacitors here between the drain and the source to uh, kind of snub any high voltages that might be there. Also put a neon light between the drain and the source so I can see if there's any potentially damaging voltage that could damage the transistor. So we've got two, these two capacitors here for a, about 2.3 nanofarads. And this is the little driver circuit. Uses a CD40, um, 4046 I think if I remember. Which has PLL functions and a voltage controlled oscillator and things like that. I'm just using the voltage controlled oscillator on it. So which is this control here that controls the um, that controls the frequency. Um, pay no attention to this capacitor here. I try to do some audio modulation by mixing in an audio signal with the um, voltage going to the voltage controlled oscillator, but that didn't do that well. It worked a little bit, but it didn't really do much. Got two transistors here to feed the output to the MOSFET. And do need a couple of transistors there because. The gate capacitance of this MOSFET means it really needs to be driven with more amps at a high frequency, so uh, those two transistors help out, and they do get a little bit warm, and so does the resistor there, just to make it a little bit more stable. But anyway, I'm sure you're bored of me waffling on, so let's uh, power this thing up and see what it can do. Okay, I'm not going to run this for too long, because do have a um, do have some corona problems. It's kind of burnt itself all around there. It is producing a little streamer. As you can see. Don't know if you can also see, but I've got Corona coming off the wire there. And a little bit of smoke. And this thing did set itself on fire the other day. Had a bit of tape wrapped around it to try to keep this pin stable. And it set the tape on fire. I'll show you some other things I can do with it. I'm going to put a top load on it now. Uh, looks like it's not doing anything, but as a matter of fact, we do have high voltage there. If I could just get the frequency right, you might be able to. See, you might see something a little bit strange. Check this out. I've got a streamer coming off my screwdriver. It's absolutely crazy. Do I have to get it tuned just right for this to happen? Okay, I've put a full top load on it and added a little screw for a breakout point but I think this might be too much of a top load for this thing because I can't really get any output from this the neon light on the transistor is just lit up then as I was going through the frequencies there is one way I can find out if this is tuned properly don't worry I drink responsibly I'm just going to put this right, right near this 
and wherever the light is brightest, I'll know it's tuned. So I'm just going to adjust the frequency again. Right about there, I think. Another thing I could try is moving the primary. Now, this is the best primary so far. Did want some other primaries. I mean, here's one right here. Didn't produce much of an output. I've got another one somewhere. I don't know where the hell it's gone, but... I'm just going to move that up and down. Just see if that helps the output at all. I know going near this thing is going to detune it anyway, but... Uh, maybe just about there, about a centimetre off the ground. I've put the primary on a couple of erasers, so it's pretty much how how high I was holding it. Really not getting much of an output. I'm just lighting up this little bulb a bit, but it's not really doing much else. You might be able to see as I adjust the frequencies, there's some frequencies there that are not very good. Because that one's lighting up the light. It's lighting it quite brightly there. This is a top load, however, that seems to work pretty good. So maybe it's the right size for this particular coil. I just when I get the frequency right. Get quite a few streamers off this one. Don't know how well that's coming through on the camera. Just trying to fine adjust the frequency. Yeah, that's looking good. So anyway, the next thing I want to do with this, I want to experiment with a different driver. I'm thinking of something of a push-pull design. And we'll see if that produces any better output, or if it completely smokes this thing. Well, okay, I thought I'd better show you the circuit for those of you who are interested. <clears throat> now, I designed this circuit myself. Had a look at a lot of other tester coil circuits, and uh, I came up with this. Using a CD4046 chip, because 555 is just not going to be able to oscillate quick enough. And we've got the two transistors there to drive the gate and the MOSFET. And it's not particularly picky and it's not particularly picky about the values you use. With this twenty-two with a twenty-two K resistor here I can get the sort of frequency range that I want. And this goes to the voltage controlled oscillator, as you can see. That's, that's how that bit works. And of course then that goes into these transistors and into the MOSFET and we get the sparkly bit here. Now what I want to do is use some kind of a push-pull circuit here with two MOSFETs one MOSFET gets an inverted version of what that MOSFET gets and then that goes into a capacitor and the coil a lot of people like to use a half bridge which is uh, that's okay but you need quite a high voltage to make that work I mean you need double the voltage that you would normally need and of course the other solution is using a center touch primary and of course all these circuits, one MOSFET is always going to need an inverted version of what this one gets. So here's one way to do it. Gate drive transformer, although I don't prefer to use these, especially with the MOSFETs I'm using. I don't think that this little circuit is going to be able to provide enough power to drive two of those MOSFETs. Even though we've got a gate drive transformer right there that does sort of work. The judges quickly cobbled together work a lot better if I used a better core but this is just to show you for example and mum's watching the family guy again it's all she ever watches on that TV nothing else the old crows show because they just go Arr! all the time Arr, I'm so stupid Arr. anyway here's the output of the gate drive transformer and as you can see, really, really ugly waveform we got here. Let's just have a look at one of the transformer's outputs. It sort of resembles the square wave. That's both of the transformer's outputs. And as you can see, the one on the bottom is an exact mirror of the one on the top. 
Trouble is, there's quite a lot of ringing and other distortion on this transformer. You can see a big lot of ringing there and there, which isn't good. So a gate drive transformer is going to be pretty much out of the question. So what am I going to do? So this is the solution I came up with. Got a couple of chips here. Um, I've forgotten what they are now. I think it's a UCC37321 and a UCC37322. I'll have to check that later. But anyway, I've got the output of the 555 thing connected to this. It's connected to both the chips. Now I've got the output from the chips connected up to the scope. And as you can see, I'm monitoring the outputs of both chips at once. Um, I'm just going to turn the light out because this scope does not show up very good on the camera. I don't know why. Should be able to see it good now. As you can see, where there's a high here, there's a low there, and when there's a low there, there's a high there. So, perfectly inverting the waveform. As I adjust the frequency, it's confusing my scope a bit, but... You can see the bottom trace is an exact mirror of the top trace. Although I learnt the hard way that you must put a 1 microfarad non-electrolytic capacitor across the supply rails, or else you end up with piss poor output and a couple of unhappy hot chips. But fortunately they didn't get damaged and they're still working. Well, this idea is down the crapper. I ain't having it. Didn't think it would work anyway. But it was worth a try. Now on to the real solution for this thing. Now have a... what's it called? Now have a centre tapped primary on the flyback. Positive goes into here, into the middle of the thing. So it's basically two flyback drivers put back to back and just connected to the same thing. I'll put up a circuit diagram of how that's connected. So there you go. Anyway, let's just turn this thing on and see how good it works. And we do get an arc through the flyback. Don't get much in the way of audio modulation. It's a little bit there. Yeah, and I connected a little neon light between the drain and the source of one of the MOSFETs just to see if there's any high voltage there. When I had it connected to a single, you know, ordinary flyback driver you know, with a 555 and a single MOSFET. That neon lamp was glowing regardless of whether there was any protection diode there, but with this circuit, that LED, um, that neon light stays out. Anyway, that's the sort of push-pull using two MOSFETs and a center tapped primary. So now, I'm going to try that on the Tesla coil. Okay, well, it's a little later on now, and I've connected this driver to the Tesla coil. And I've modified the primary so it is, as you can see, Sintertact primary. Couldn't think of the words then. And this thing does have quite a little bit of output now, as I will now show you. Voila! Au voilette! I don't know why the output of this thing is quite buzzy. I don't know if it, maybe it's pulling the power supply, maybe it's pulling so many amps from the power supply it's got a lot of ripple or something, but uh, if I try to make that arc stable, like if I just... Drawing an arc from it, the arc doesn't buzz at all. Only the streamer does. Actually, let's just see what that does without a breakout point. Yeah, better not run it like that for too long. Okay, I'm just using half of one of those cake tins as a top load. 
So let's turn on again, retune it. Well, I can hear a very slight hum coming out of it, but nothing else. Okay. We have streamers. I think it just needed a little bit of gentle persuasion. Oh, look at that. Like I say, the arcs, steady arcs, are just completely silent. Anyway, now, let's try that with a full top load. There we are. Full top load. Even added a breakout point. So let's see what we get now. I'm just going through the frequency. I'm getting about 15,000 volts out of that easily. Though I was getting slightly bigger arcs with a less of a top load. Let's just do that again, retune it and stuff. You know what I hate about this thing? Going near it, it detunes it. I know what some of you are thinking. How pathetic, man. But I don't care. That's the best output I've got from this thing so far. Right. Okay, reconfigured the primary. I've basically got two primaries, well, two windings on the same thing here. They're sort of wound in an interlaced way, so... Got one coil there, next coil there, first coil, second coil, first coil, second coil, and all the way down. And they're connected out of phase. I've no, I've no idea what kind of output this is going to give, or if it's even going to work. So let's see what we get. Well, I think my prime, I think my top load is trying to make a bid for freedom. Um. That's just crazy. Alright, well, let's just try that with a full top load. Not getting any breakout. He says, and then it starts. And now, let's try this with the top load that seems to work the best. Okay, so there it is. And this is going to be the shot for the video's thumbnail. Because I know this is a... Get some good streamers off this particular one. So enough of me rambling on, and let's just get straight on with it.
I do not know if you can see what I'm doing. Alright, well I thought before I'd leave I would do another radio transmission experiment. Now, I just reconfigured this a little bit so uh, now only one of the MOSFETs is connected and also just one of the one of the coils is connected and I have this Walkman here wired up to the voltage controlled oscillator on the chip so we can have audio modulation now bear in mind that this thing is going to transmit FM okay frequency modulated you know I've got a radio here tuned to the same frequency that this is transmitting on yet it's on medium wave which is AM so I'll just turn it on now you can hear all the usual weird AM background noise. So I'm going to turn this on. Already the radio is making weird noises. So I'm just going to turn on the actual thing here. And we have radio silence. Okay. So I'm going to press play on this. And there it is, coming out of, that is FM, on an AM radio. So an AM radio can receive FM. Although if I tune it to dead on, we just get a little bit of distortion, which somewhat resembles the thing. And pay no attention to this wire, that's just the power lead. If I just make it a wee bit out of tune. Here it comes in good and clear. Good and clear without any distortion apart from the actual speaker. There's something rattling around in there, but yep, that was AM, I mean FM, being received on an AM radio. One thing I did forget to mention is I've put a 10k, I've put a 10 ohm resistor in between the power supply and this primary coil because we don't really want this arcing when we're trying to transmit onto radio because if it does that's going to mess a few things up. But anyway, yes, I'm going to leave now, so until next time, goodbye.